Anna Gasparian of the Young Turks has seen the light. She has come to the realization that her and her network, the Young Turks, were just as bad as the right when pushing disinformation. See, we live in a world of extremes. On one side, we have the right-wing media who openly lie and deceive their audiences with false facts and made-up narratives. To the point where Fox News had to pay almost $800 million for telling lies and falsehoods to the public. The right wing has its issues, but the left wing is just as bad, if not worse. See, they push lies in the exact same way. And one of their, quote, news organizations that are pushing those lies are named the Young Turks. They're here on YouTube. Now, I have many videos on calling out the lives of the Young Turks for their coverage of things like Kyle Rittenhouse to their coverage of the City by Karen story. See, I don't care about opinions, but I do care about the facts. And this is my beef with both sides. They're either making up facts or leaving them out to push a particular narrative. They want you to feel a certain way about a story. And when those facts disagree with their predetermined narrative, then we're supposed to just ignore those facts. Now, that brings me back to Anna Kasparian. She was one of those people pushing those lies and she seemed to enjoy doing it. But now she's coming clean. Now, in an interview with Stitch and Adam, link in the description, she finally does something that I assume would never happen. She tells the truth about these stories. She actually looked at the facts of the stories that she was reporting on and shocking, I know, she realized that her network, TYT, was pushing absolute propaganda for the left wing. Now, let's go over some of those examples that now she regrets on pushing. As I mentioned earlier, Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, from the start, I said Kyle Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense and was not guilty. I didn't think he should even be charged. Now, why did I come to that conclusion? Well, I saw the video, I read the indictment and all the court documents, and they essentially made the case in the court documents, in the police records, that Kyle Rittenhouse was innocent. Remember, the facts were on Kyle Rittenhouse's side. But Anna and the Young Turks went out of their way to make it seem like Kyle Rittenhouse was a racist, a murderer, and guilty of carrying an illegal gun across state lines. All of which was false at the time they said it. It was false if you just read the court documents. The court even dropped the gun charge because Kyle actually had a legal gun. Now, here is Anna and the media saying that Kyle crossed state lines with an illegal gun. And you'll hear how they tried to hammer it home. Listen to these clips. Who crossed state lines. He drove from Illinois to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now again, he drove from Illinois to Wisconsin. It's not like he was in his front yard. And he was approached by a group of individuals who posed an imminent threat to his life. He drove across state lines in a state that he doesn't even live in. And then he crossed state lines with it. He crossed state lines, meaning he traveled across state lines. He traveled there from out of state who again, uh, traveled across state lines. Like you, they were trying to not paint him. He was a kid that took a, a, a gun across state lines and went and did what he did. Across state lines, driving across state borders. He's driving across state lines. Across the state lines, across state lines. Across state lines, across state lines. If you look at the Rittenhouse case, he crossed state lines. Drives up to, to, to events. Across state lines. Came across state lines. Kyle Rittenhouse, who traveled across state lines. From out of state, out of his own state. Came across state borders. Whenever you have a situation where a 17 year old is crossing state lines, uh, it, it, white teenager. He crosses a state line, drives 30 minutes into Kenosha. Remember, he came across the line. He crossed state lines. Cross state lines. Across state lines. He crossed state lines. Kyle Rittenhouse, who crossed state lines, came across. Across state lines. Cross state lines. He went across state lines. Cross state lines. Cross state lines. And cross state lines. A 17 year old kid from out of state. He from made out of state. all cross state lines. Cross state lines. Cross state lines. Across state lines. Cross state lines. Went over state lines. Drove across state lines. He drove across state, had his mother drive him across state lines from out of state. Say the line, Bart. 
The teenager traveled across state lines. Carl Rittenhouse traveled from his home in Illinois across the state line to Wisconsin. Drove to a different state, drives up to the state. Again, drove across state line. Now, this is what Anna says about Carl Rittenhouse now and the state lines issue. And if I'm alone at a park and some random guy tries to lure my dog away from me, I'm going to freak out, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I just am. And so, okay, with the Rittenhouse story, I was going to cover the trial and I just needed to go back and just like really, really look at all of the details and remember all the details. So when I do the story, I, I get the facts right. And then as I'm doing that, I come across a New York Times video. And this was a really, really well done video that they posted on YouTube that showed you in, in slow motion, like how everything transpired that night. Mm hmm. And once you see it for yourself, it's really, really difficult to argue that in those moments he was not acting in self-defense. And right. this is an area where, you know, Jake and I disagree because, you know, if if someone's hitting you over the head with a skateboard, <laughs> that could kill that could kill you. That could kill you, you know? And so, you know, Jank is a very He's a strong minded person and he's not one to back down from a fight. So in his mind, you know, someone confronts you with a skateboard. He he doesn't see it as a threat, but I, I do. And Rittenhouse is not a big burly guy who can like defend himself um, against someone who's like hitting him over the head with a skateboard as he's lying on his back. So right. once I saw all those details, first of all, I had to convey them to my audience and be honest about what the what the reality was. The other thing was, you know, there was a lot of misreporting about how Kyle Rittenhouse was in possession of an illegal weapon and that he crossed state lines with that <laughs> oh, illegal no. weapon. Okay? Yep. So that was a lie. And it's not a lie that I just made up in my mind, right? That was how it was reported initially, which is why I would mention the state lines, but not because, oh, how dare he cross state lines. Anyone in this country has the right to cross state lines. It was because it was reported that he was in possession of an illegal gun right. and he traveled across state lines with an illegal gun, which is a serious charge. But it turned out that he did not travel across state lines with that yeah, weapon. Yeah, he didn't he actually, do that. Yeah, the weapon right. was in, in the area already. Yeah. Exactly. He bought it from a friend when he was already in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Now, that fact about Kyle not bringing a gun across state lines was out there from the beginning. But they pushed that for months. Now, she's admitting that TYT pushed garbage to their audience and did not research the story. They just pushed out the mainstream media's narrative, and that narrative was a lie. So there were two narratives about Kyle Rittenhouse. One, that he was a white supremacist mass shooter, and the other, that he was some innocent kid who was legally defending himself. Remember, the facts supported that he was innocent, and the spin was that he was guilty. Now, Anna then goes on to throw shots at others in her network, particularly the ultimate race hustler, Rashard Ritchie. Now, see, Richard Ritchie sees only black and white. His motto is black is good, white is bad, and facts don't matter at all. Now, when it came to the City by Karen story, TYT jumped out claiming that this six-month pregnant white woman was trying to steal a bike from four black kids after she completed a 12-hour shift at work. Dr. Ritchie said that she was a theft, and that's what we should call it. Here's the clip. Karenicity is unbelievable. Put up the picture. We got her name, where she works, her boss. I want to remind you of a couple of things that happened in this video. Obviously, it is telling, right? You know, she said, and I quote, you are hurting my fetus, my unborn child. Did you all hear that part? She said that. Why did she say that? Because that bolsters her argument to do what she's attempting to do, which is theft under any other circumstance. We will call this attempted theft if the black male went up to the white female who paid for her opportunity to utilize the device and he decided to grab it and try to take it. We will call that clearly attempted theft. Now come find out that this white woman had actually rented the bike and in fact, she was the one who had 
ownership of the bike at the time. And in fact, the black teen was trying to take the bike from her. She actually rented the bike. She showed receipts. So Dr. Short Richie had to pull down the video and make a public apology. Here's the clip. So let me contextualize this properly, okay? Uh, naturally, we reported on a viral video as the facts were presented at that time. By the time we reported on this video, well, there was no actual statement yet from the other side. The hospital had a statement at that time, and they were troubled by what they saw as well. So were we. Now, if if this is true, which confirmation is still pending, still trying to find the individuals who are part of this narrative on the other side. If it is true, it does prove, in my opinion, that Ms. Comrie had a good faith belief that she, in fact, had a right to the bike. But that doesn't mean the young men did not. It doesn't mean they did not have a good faith belief that the bike was not hers. That part of the story is important too. So, TYT caught again, pushing a false narrative and lies. But here's how Anna feels about it now. Look at other sources that I typically wouldn't have looked at. And then the other thing that I do now is I just wait. You know, I think the story involving the so-called city bike Karen is a good example of that. The main show, because TYT consists of many different shows, right? The show that I'm the executive producer and host of is the main flagship show, The Young Turks. Mm -hmm. And prior to that story breaking, I had a meeting with my team and I was like, listen, I don't want you guys pitching stories about random individuals in the country who are caught in an out of context video allegedly behaving badly. I, I think these stories are divisive. I don't think we usually have the full details before we talk about these stories. And honestly, at the end of the day, engaging in these witch hunts is actually causing more division and hate in the country than anything else. So like if there's a story that's particularly like jarring and you guys really do want to cover it, that's fine. But just understand that we are going to wait. Like we are not in the business of breaking news. I don't give a shit about being the first uh, in reporting the story or whatever. I wanna make sure that when we do, we actually report it correctly and we don't have egg on our face later. Now, there are a mm -hmm. bunch of other shows on the network that I have no say over, that I have no control over who, you know, inaccurately reported on it and uh, had to issue retractions. They had to take videos down and all that stuff. And I just think that was a teachable moment, hopefully a teachable moment for everyone in the company but certainly, you know, this is an ongoing conversation I have with my team. And luckily, I don't know how I did. So the TYT brand is still pushing BS stories and false narratives. And she is now on the inside trying to fight against it, allegedly. Now, one of the last points that Anna made that I wanted to delve into is she wanted to address trans issues. Now, personally, I believe trans people should have every right to live the lives that they want to live, whatever makes them happy whatever, right? Within reason. But no right is absolute. For example, my right to swing my arms doesn't give me the right to swing them in a way where I'm going to hit your body. And this is the issue when it comes to the trans movement. Having, for instance, biological men compete against biological women in sports is ridiculous and dangerous in some cases. Now, Anna's going to explain how TYT was pushing the fact that transitioning children with puberty blockers didn't cause harm and that it was reversible. But now Anna has done some research and now she knows the truth that what she was saying was a lie. Listen to it. I'm subscribed to Blocked and Reported. I have listened to endless podcast episodes uh, from Blocked and Reported. I haven't seen anything from Jesse Single that communicates to me that he is a transphobe, that he is a bad person. He did straight news reporting on basically what you know, some of the risks could be when it comes to transitioning literal kids uh, with puberty blockers and then cross-sex hormones. And through his reporting, which I'm very sad to say I didn't really come across until this year, I learned that I was wrong about a bunch of other things, right? So for instance, it is a lie that puberty blockers are reversible. In some cases, they are not, and they can cause irreparable harm. And look, you might think, Okay, but you got to do a balancing act. And if someone, if a child or if a teenager has severe gender dysphoria and it would actually be better for that person to go on puberty blocks, okay, I mean, we should be able to balance that out. But my point here is withholding the information because you don't like the information getting out there 
ain't the way to go because that destroys any opportunity for us to actually have a good faith debate about what we should do moving forward. What are the pros and cons? So there's that, you know, all of this stuff just, it started adding up. And through listening to Blocked and Reported, I found out I got a lot of stories wrong as well. Crazy, right? Now she realizes that she was lying to millions of people. Now, I wanna be very clear. Anna's not turning right wing. She's not voting for Trump and TYT is not becoming Fox News. But they are open to the truth. That is what this interview was about. She is telling everyone that they are now committed not to the left-wing narrative, but to the truth. The truth in a Kyle Rittenhouse case, the truth in a City by Karen case, and the truth about puberty blockers. She is essentially admitting that they were pushing lies and falsehoods, and crazy enough, YouTube was promoting them. YouTube was promoting this misinformation while removing people like me who is trying to give you the truth. Now, you know, I wanna end with this. The truth is not right wing or left wing. It's just truth. Now, TYT has been avoiding the truth for years now and they are trying something new, reporting the truth. Shocking, I know. Now, let me know what you think. Is TYT going to turn over a new leaf or not? Now, I'm going to wait and see but hit me up in the comments. Now, I'll try to read them all and your feedback actually helps me get better at making these type of videos. So my name is Ate The Lawyer and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.